Um, so first, uh, thank you everyone for joining us here uh, for the announcement of the sixth cohort of PGH Lab, as well as um, a little bit of recognition here for our fifth cohort of PGH Lab. Um, they'll be touching here on a panel um, just after bit fireside chat style. Um, so very briefly here, I'm gonna go over the agenda. Um, we're starting here with a brief welcoming, um, again, just acknowledgement um, and a thank you to everyone joining us tonight. Um, after uh, a brief uh, history of where we've come from, we'll be starting our fifth cohort fireside chat. Um, we have two companies with us here today from that cohort, uh, Bhavani Patel from Beam Data and Aaron Morris from All Vision. So thank you very much. They'll be answering um, some questions uh, as we go through here. Following the fireside chat, we will have a uh, overlay of the PGH Lab sixth cohort new updates um, and iterations. Uh, my colleague, Etha Cow will be reviewing that area um, in section. And then following and wrapping up, we will have a questions and answers section. At the bottom there, um, you'll see the PGH Lab at Pittsburgh, pa.gov email. We have that posted throughout the slides. Um, we do have the chat uh, feature disabled here on Zoom. Um, so any questions that you may have as we progress through um, this presentation, please feel free to uh, send us an email there again at pghlab at p uh, pittsburghpa.gov, excuse me. Um, and we'll be happy to answer any of those questions um, in the Q&A section. Um, and one final thing, we will be making these slides available um, to everyone who is in attendance here um, at the conclusion of the event, as well as posting um, this live event on the uh, city's YouTube channel. All right, so moving right along into just uh, a brief history here. Um, so PGH Lab uh, did start in 2016. Um, the goal of uh, this program here is to help connect uh, startups within the greater Pittsburgh area to help uh, solve some of the city challenges um, we face here, both from a resident standpoint, as well as internal workings. Um, it was originally a four month uh, long cohort, um, but after some consideration, we are extending it to six months. Um, Etha will be touching on that in a little bit here. Uh, reasons why uh, it is beneficial for startups to partner with us here um, at PGH Lab. They get a proof of concept testing for whatever their product or service um, they provide is. They get a small introduction to what it's like working with a government entity, as well as getting exposure to the internal department structure um, and city authorities. And then additionally, they get to leverage our city platforms such as uh, Meetup, YouTube channels, et cetera, in order to uh, widen their reach for the vision um, and product they are producing. Um, the other side of that, the city, we get the added benefit of one, uplifting uh, different Pittsburgh-based businesses around us, as well as hopefully tackling um, in a creative way some of the issues uh, we face here at the city, providing solutions. So the progress we've reached thus far, we've had five cohorts, um, again, thank you to uh, Bhavani and Aaron for joining us today, um, who are uh, uh, success stories from our last fifth cohort. Um, we've had 26 startups in total. We partner with five government agencies, including uh, Pittsburgh Sewer and Water, the Parking Authority, just to name a few. Um, and in 2018, uh, we were actually awarded the Economic Development Award Silver status um, from the International Economic Development Council. And then one other notable fact, uh, we were actually replicated um, in Durham, North Carolina, um, once uh, we had some best practice exchange um, and they started their own version of PGH Lab called Innovate Durham. So that was pretty exciting to see. So wrapping up our uh, brief welcoming, um, we will be moving on to the fireside chat here. Um, I would like to introduce again, our fifth uh, cohorts here. Uh, Bhavani Patel from Beam Data and Aaron Morris from All Vision. Thank you kindly um, for joining. And again, everyone, um, if any questions kind of pop up that you have for them um, or Ether or myself during this, uh, that email is posted there at the bottom, pghlab at pittsburghpa.gov. Thank you very much. Thanks, Trevor. My name is Etha Cow. Uh, and so Trevor and I are the Civic Innovation Team based out of the city of Pittsburgh. Um, 
Department of Innovation and Performance. And so we are the team um, that initiates PGH Lab. So really in thinking about PGH Lab, this last cohort, um, you know, I think COVID kind of threw us for a loop, um, but we really did want to recognize the work and uh, the projects that the fifth cohort companies did. So here tonight, um, we have Erin from all Vision, as well as Bhavani from Beam Data. So just a very casual chat. Um, so first question, uh, Aaron and Bhavani, tell us what your PGH Lab pilot project was. Aaron, do you wanna go first? Sure. Um, yeah, so uh, I, uh, um, Aaron Morse, uh, All Vision, uh, what we do, we create essentially maps. Um, we uh, leverage uh, like robotic sensor data. So for those around Pittsburgh, you're I, I think at this point pretty familiar with the autonomous vehicles um, and all the like crazy spinning devices that they have on top of them. Uh, well, the the data they collect actually um, it's really useful for the for the the robot or the car, obviously, but um, it's also quite handy for doing things like inventorying of assets around the city. Um, prior to uh, being uh, kind of offered the, the, the you know, uh, acceptance into the cohort and, and participation, uh, we had done a kind of a demo project with um, uh, Domi looking at parking um, in the Strip District, kind of looking at the, you know, cars. And through that, um, you know, that was, it was uh, brought up that there was a need to inventory streetlights. Um, and uh, we didn't really appreciate the extent of the need until we were accepted into the cohort. And we, you know, if you walk by a, a streetlight, you'll, uh, you'll notice sometimes uh, like a little black tag that has a number on it, usually begins with a letter S or something. Um, that's, that's an asset tag, just kind of reporting it. And so, um, uh, we said, well, what, what's the issue? And they showed us the Excel spreadsheet that went with that asset tag. And it said, yeah that is somewhere on Forbes, don't know where. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, we need to maintain these. So our, our, our project was, um, uh, they, they gave us um, a few areas, uh, sort of key areas um, throughout the city um, to inventory, kind of just like, like geolocate um, streetlights uh, for the city so they could update and, and you know, better maintain their, their sort of GIS database. So that awesome. was our project. Great. Thanks so much, Aaron. Uh, Bhavani, do you want to tell everyone about your uh, PGH Lab 5.0 project? Yep, yep. Uh, so um, as Ethan mentioned, my name is Bhavani Patel, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Beam Data. And we are a civic tech company that sort of operates at the intersection of policy, social justice issues, and, and sort of community-based data. Um, so we, we were paired with the Housing Authority of the City of Pittsburgh. And we were tasked with thinking about how we could create a data visualization tool that would map all the housing authority communities in the city of Pittsburgh, and then the sort of related attributes to that. So, and, and, and attributes that particularly would impact residents of those housing authority communities and surrounding areas. So for example, if you had a particular housing authority community, how far is it from transportation? What does the food access look like in that area? Um, also, what are the sort of determinants of that housing authority community? So how many you know, people are living in those areas? What does the demographic breakdown look like? Um, and this was supposed to be used as an internal tool for the housing authority community to give them a better sense of how, how they were serving the people that they in intended to serve. Um, for us, this was a really cool project because it sort of served as an opportunity to, to explore and um, play around with how we could think more about community generated data and how data could be used to um, basically inform people more so about their neighborhood. You know, how are they experiencing their lived environments? What are some of the challenges that they're facing and how can institutions and agencies like HACP better serve residents? Um, and so this pilot project was a great experience to just have conversations and explore. And it really did sort of serve as a precursor to um, one of our civic action apps that we actually just launched called Be The Change, which is a civic action app that helps people basically provide community-based feedback on um, how they're experiencing their lived environments and directly collecting with their elected officials. Awesome. Thanks so much, Bhavani. Uh, both amazing projects. Um, and I know that both of your teams work extremely hard on those. Um, so thank you. 
Um, and I guess turning it back to Bhavani, um, you hinted a little bit about what lessons you've learned, but we do have some um, prospective PGH lab companies in the audience. So what lessons would you like to share um, that you learned from this experience? Yeah, I think my favorite thing about sort of being in the PGH lab cohort was that when we were coming into this, we sort of had a general idea of what we were interested in, where were our strengths were, but we were one of the companies that really had like a defined product idea. Like this is what we're, you know, we're trying to sell this product and we're trying to like gain a new customer. We really joined PGH lab with this idea of being more of an exploratory opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and so being paired with HACP was perfect because, you know, it was, um, it was, it was low stakes enough that we, we could have conversations, it was a learning opportunity. And obviously we wanted to deliver a project, which we did, but you know, the, the sort of pressure wasn't necessarily there that if, if we, if we, if we don't intend on deliver, if we don't deliver what we intended on that we could still have space to pivot and um, explore another avenue to deliver a project that would be beneficial. And I think when you're getting started and you know, you have an idea that's kind of eating at you, but you're not 100% sure whether or not it's something that could be a company and that you could build a business around it, I think PGH Lab really offers space for you to grow, um, fail, make mistakes, and then pick yourself up without the fear of, you know, doing it alone. Um, and so having that support system through PGH, PGH Lab was really helpful. And I think that that truly did set us up um, really well to kind of hit the, hit the road running when it came to development of the Be The Change app, figuring out what our pilot for that would look like, um, and kind of hinting at some of the, the roadblocks that we might hit, um, hit in the future with that. So we walked in to that project very much so prepared because of our PGH lab pilot experience. Great, thanks so much, Bhavani. Aaron, would you like to share some lessons learned? Uh, yeah, um, and I, I'll echo you know, some similar lessons learned there. Um, I think it was, we were also, we, we had had, uh, we have a, a, a product line that does, you know, um, uh, asset identification and extraction for, you know, kind of key um, urban um, infrastructure. And uh, we were very interested in adding like streetlights as, uh, as a attribute uh, of that data set. Mm -hmm. And so this was, we kind of like had a, an idea that or an assumption that this would be an interesting, um, you know, object of interest, not just for the city of Pittsburgh, but for many cities. Uh, and so, you know, what, what you go into with, you know, these sort of scenarios is um, just a rough idea. And so you're really working, you know, deep with stakeholders, getting to know like what, what actually matters, uh, what doesn't matter is sometimes surprising getting it firsthand. Like I told you that that Excel spreadsheet was, was eye opening, right? Like, you know, we had an idea of what the city was using to manage. We didn't, and you know the reality kind of really reinforced what the needs were, um, but in that same token, it was it was definitely exploratory. It was that right? Um, you know, there's not necessarily a like a guarantee we would set out and deliver exactly what we promised. And um, you know, if we look at the outcome, even though we believe it was very successful, um, you know, it was slightly different from where we started because um, you know we kind of learned things along the way. Uh, so having that ability to, you know, get in, be flexible, you know, change direction where need, but still, you know, uh, you know, deliver on these sort of the sort of the broad strokes of what you set out to do. Um, you know, it's, I mean, very much what I think the program is set up to do and very much what we did. Awesome. Wonderful. Yeah, I think uh... Lots of lessons learned uh, from the last cohort, Aaron. Um, so how has PGH Lab, um, your experience with this program um, and the case study helped all vision um, for future customers? Yeah, it did a number of things. Um, you know, <laughs> first and foremost, when you when you are a company with a product that has, you know, a customer base in the government sector, you need references, right? You need examples you need to say i've worked with the city i've done this work um you know getting those first opportunities is very difficult um so we definitely leveraged um the the work here uh, as a reference um from a number of the other other opportunities that we pursued sort of after the fact um so that that you know again if you if you're looking at customer base in uh, you know, the, the city sector, like it, this is a really good program uh, to kind of uh, get as a reference. Um, again, we, we did a, you know, what we came out of with 
you know, our, our, the way our system works, we train up models to identify key assets. And we, we added a new class of, of an asset identifier coming out of it. Uh, you know, streetlights are a very interesting uh, piece of infrastructure for cities. Um, you hear a lot about 5G, you hear a lot about, um, you know, a smart city. And as it turns out, streetlights are kind of really key assets to make that happen. Uh, and so, um, you know, the, there is a sort of a growing demand to document where these things are across many, many cities uh, and lots of interest for not just cities themselves, but telecom and utilities. And so, you know, we walked away with a really good piece of technology as well. So yeah. it was it was really beneficial on both sides. That's great to hear, Aaron. Um... Yes, it was great to work with All Vision. Um, so turning it over to Bhavane, um, you know, how has you hinted uh, on how it's helped Beam Data, but you know, can you elaborate a little bit more about how that experience um, has helped you with this current product? Yeah, I think for us, a big, a lot of it was. Um... As Aaron, as was mentioning, it's sort of difficult to get access and kind of carve out. Um, time to spend with these folks who are doing this work daily, for example, with the HACP and kind of being in the community. And so having gone through PGH job, it was really nice to be able to lean on those connections in that network to help us do a little bit of the market research and really identify um, what were some of the pain points, what were we trying to address, mm -hmm. um, and how could we build a product that would truly address those things at the core. And I think that having that front row seat was um, it wouldn't have been that easy for us to get access and have those discussions. And I think that that really did elevate um, our planning process. It really kind of helped us determine what we wanted to focus on while we were building, while we were in development. It also informed our marketing plan in many ways and thinking about how we wanted to center the voices of community and actually did inspire us to also um, pursue building a community, a community board to actually give us feedback on the app that we were developing. Wow. Um, because one of the things that was really important for us was to, was to build an app that was, you know, kind of integrating community voices, this idea of building with community as opposed to for. Um, so these are some of the lessons that we picked up while having conversations with HACP and sort of learning about the housing, housing authority communities. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Bhavani. Um, and just, you know, making sure that um, while we have our PGH Lab uh, Cohort 5 members here, um, if anyone in the audience, we also have some review committee members who are new, um, please shoot an email to pghlab at pittsburghpa.gov. Um, we'll be answering questions at the end. Um, so Bhavani, Aaron, any last advice, uh, you know, lessons, thoughts on your experience with PGH Lab? Um, so yeah, I, I mean, like, I think I've, you know, covered a lot of um, both, you know, kind of what we learned and the overall benefits. Um, you know, I, I will say, um, you know, kudos to um, uh, the, the, the organization and, you know, sort of our contacts. Um, they, they were very engaged, um, you know, very supportive. Um, I would say that, um, you know, just like all uh, sort of good projects, uh, you know, communication is key, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being upfront uh, about uh, early on, like what's possible, what's not possible. And as you learn, again, as long as you, at least for us, uh, was kind of clear and transparent about, you know, kind of how things were going to go, mm -hmm. um, never seemed to be a problem. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that I think if, if anything, you know, go into it with, you know, something of a good idea. Um, you know, if, if you get into it, you know, just communicate well. And I think uh, it, it'll, it'll be a successful project. Yeah, that really valid advice. Um, thanks, Aaron. It's good to hear from companies. Uh, Bhavani, any thoughts? Yeah, I think I would echo that last, uh, that last bit. Um, I, I think it's okay not to have a completely honed out idea. I think we oftentimes think of these sorts of processes as like, oh, you have to have something that's completely clear and then you apply to PGH Lab. But I think the whole point of PGH Lab is to not have a complete idea of what you want. You're getting partnered with an agency to kind of explore that um, and determine expectations. And I think there's something to be said about not having a completed, complete idea and actually working through that with the experts who are you know, in this space already. And for us, I think that um, that's, that's what we got out of it. I mean, we were actually able to kind of 
really develop our product in a way that we wanted because of this experience. And I think, you know, you should run with it. I mean, apply and see where it ends up, but I don't think you should be afraid of not having everything and not having all the answers going in. Fantastic advice. Thank you, Bhavani and Aaron, for sharing your experiences. Uh, thank you both for all of your work over the past couple of months working with um, the city of Pittsburgh, as well as the housing authority city of Pittsburgh. Um, and yeah, yeah, uh, we will, if it's okay with you both, uh, we'd love to share your, you know, emails um, for any future questions from future uh, potential cohort six companies. Sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. All right. Um, so moving on with the program, because it is a beautiful day outside. So we want to make sure we have some time to get some sun. Um, I will be going over the changes uh, for this next cohort. PGH Lab has had years of uh, success with many companies. Um, but of course, you know, with COVID uh, going on, as well as um, everything that's going on um, in our country. Um, PGH Lab is making some pretty big changes. Um, so we'll still be prioritizing companies, um, you know, that are startups, but of course, led by members um, of and are benefiting communities that are underrepresented in technology. Um, as a government agency, um, we definitely want to drive home the fact that we are um, in favor of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and especially in technology in Pittsburgh. So as Trevor mentioned before, the program timeline is increasing from four months to six months. Um, this was based on feedback from some of the city champions uh, or the government staff who worked with the companies as well as the companies themselves. Um, there will be more government consulting as well as a uh, process improvement training. Um, so we have some internal staff who are very talented and we wanted to lend their skills to the companies if needed. And then also training on a variety of government procurement processes um, and how to respond to requests for proposals. So I think it's very much um, Maybe the fact that some people think that you can't, uh, you know, as a company, you're basically just uh, destined to a lifetime of poverty if you get a government contract. Uh, and that's not necessarily true, but it is kind of a complicated process based on the different government agencies. So we wanted to provide that education. Um, and finally, we wanted to address uh, a problem first model. Um, and what that means uh, to talk about in the next slide. So PGH Lab historically um, has had a couple categories, um, but this round of uh, PGH Lab, there will be a prioritization of addressing a specific city challenge. Um, and this time we have two specific city challenges. So the first one is that there are is no complete inventory of all of the sidewalk conditions, um, as well as the ADA ramps across the city. Um, and of course, this is an accessibility issue. Um, and as a government entity, this is something that we want to prioritize. And the second one is that um, unfortunately, uh, we have a, kind of a paper pencil intake and tracking system for a couple of our departments, um, or it's kind of a fill in PDF form, um, and it makes it a little bit difficult for some of my colleagues in government um, to keep track of things. So we'll be prioritizing those city challenges, but of course, um, welcome proposals from uh, any and all companies that are interested in the following categories of improving government operations. So whether it's uh, figuring out data solutions or something that would address smart cities, um, resident engagement, so improving the communication between the government as well as the city and greater Pittsburgh region's residents um, through technology. The climate change and the environment, I mean, very self-explanatory, but extremely important within Pittsburgh. Uh, and of course, the open call, because um, there are amazing, innovative ideas out there, and we want to welcome all of them. So very briefly, um, wanted to go over the 2020 timeline. Um, so the first thing on the list is tonight. Um, but just a reminder for all interested companies, as well as, uh, you know, anyone who uh, would like to spread the word, the application is uh, technically open on the website. Um, it is a Google form, so you can kind of click through it and preview the questions, but uh, they will technically open on October 19th for two weeks and then close at midnight on November 2nd. Um, so please do take a look at the application. Um, it is on the PGH Lab website, which will be uh, at the last slide. 
Um, the round one contestants um, will then be judged from a uh, 26 person review committee um, based on staff who work for the city um, and other municipal partners. And then the round two pitch presentation will be on November 23rd and these will be the finalists from round one. And then the cohort will be announced at the end of November. Um, and if all goes well, the pilot will uh, commence from December to May for six months, and then we'll have a, a final community presentation. Um, and of course, it will be virtual, most likely. Um, but uh, yeah, we definitely want to uh, promote this program as much as possible. We want to give a lot of opportunity to different startup companies that can, you know, work with the government um, and get solid test case um, scenarios like Beam Data and All Vision. So we are at the end of the program. Um, so please connect with us. I apologize that the Zoom chat is disabled, uh, but again, the email address is down below. Um, I don't believe I have any emails so far, uh, but also make sure to check out the website. You can also just Google uh, PGH Lab um, City of Pittsburgh and then go onto the website, check us out. Uh, the application is on there. There's also a blog um, that talks about the specific changes, especially focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then please follow the Twitter, which is PGHIP, and that stands for Pittsburgh uh, Innovation and Performance, which is the department that we fall under. So it is 534, um, kind of sped through that. Um, but we want to thank all of you for attending, taking time during this uh, Wednesday evening um, to spend another hour uh, or so in front of Zoom. Um, but also, yeah, thank you for your participation, for your interest in PGH Lab.